All right, gang, the purpose of this video is to provide an example for the final project. Uh, let me pump the brakes a little bit and tell you uh, a little bit of history motivation for the final project. Uh, first of all, STAT 1150 is included in the general education uh, program, and it's under the under the quantitative reasoning. Well, there are certain goals in the in the quantitative reasoning, quantitative reasoning uh, component uh, that I have to check off, and one is to communicate quantitative stuff. All right, that, that's about as deep as I want to go into that. So what I've done for years is I've required a final project, and, and years ago what I would do is I would tell students, well, uh, examine the relationship between two variables and write it up. And, uh, and, and present the results. And, you know, 99 out of every 100 uh, fell short of uh, my expectations. And it dawned on me about 10 or 12 years ago that it was unfair to students because I hadn't taught them how to write uh, uh, up, uh, the results from a, a correlation regression analysis. So this is a little bit maybe too, quote unquote, holding your hand. Uh, but I'm doing all the work for you for the most part, showing you how I want this uh, final project presented. And all you have to do really is just fill in the, the blanks, put in the right, uh, the variables and the right data set and, you know, make the correct observations about the scatter plot and so on. So that's the purpose of this video is to show you, well, actually the purpose of the video is to show you how to get a 100% on your final project. So what each of you will have is you'll have uh, a, a, a data set and the data set that I'm going to use for the example is called Car Details 2019 Model. And where I'll get that uh, is through the StatCrunch website. And go to data sets. Now, this is not data sets for your textbook. Uh, it's just data sets uh, with Stack Crunch. And uh, you guys search a little bit. Uh, actually, you don't have to search much at all. It's right there. Uh, you may have to go into multiple pages. Uh, when I assign you your question and your data set, I'll, uh, I'll try to tell you what page uh, it's on. So it's not too difficult. All right, so I have this data set. Uh, I think there were 300 uh, entries. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I want to examine the relationship between weight and horsepower. So you're going to type this out. The first paragraph is going to be exactly like this. The purpose of the project is to examine the relationship between x equal. You're going to type in whatever your x variable is in, in this uh, illustration. It's, it's uh, weight. And you're going to type in whatever your y variable is for the demonstration I'm giving to you. That's horsepower. Using the data set, you're going to type in the data set that I assign you. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, uh, examine the scatter plot. So the patterns observed from the scatter plot indicate, right? So you're going to type all those words. Uh, and then you're going to make these determinations because you may or may not have a linear relationship. You may or may not have a positive. Maybe it's negative. You may or may not have strong, uh, you know, weak or moderate. So uh, what I would do is just go to graph, uh, go to scatter plot. Uh, I want my X to be weight. And I want my Y to be horsepower. Right. Uh, just just keep it simple. Compute. So here's what I get. So when I look at that, I see a linear relationship. I see a positive relationship, obviously, uh, rises to the right. And I see a strong relationship. OK, so I write that down. So you observe the scatter plot that goes along with the relationship that you're examining. And you tell me what it is. Again, linear, not linear, positive or negative, strong weak uh, or uh, moderate, okay? Uh, now, next thing I'll do is I want to copy this. So if I go uh, options, copy, and then I can uh, use for this one, it's control V, copy image. And then I come over into my document and just paste it. 
and then resize it, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, and then just, you know, I, I just put it in the right spot. So I'm going to get rid of that because I've already put it in there. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to analyze my data. So the observed correlation with R squared, uh, there's a little bit of a typo there. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the observed correlation and R squared. See, I can get all that from uh, just the regression output. So simple linear. You're going to select your X variable. You're going to select your Y variable. And uh, for now, let's just uh, run the hypothesis test. All right, so we know that the observed correlation coefficient is going to be right there with an R squared of presented right there. I'm just going to type those values in there, whatever, again, you get. Uh, the value for the R squared indicates that, uh, whatever the percentage is of the variance in whatever your Y is, can be explained the regression on whatever your X is. It's that simple. All you have to do is every place that there's an underline, you enter the appropriate information for your uh, final project. Now, the estimated regression coefficients, you're going to have the slope, which is right there. You're going to have the intercept, negative 31.84, right there. That information, as I've uh, taught previously, is also uh, given right here. Uh, then you say, furthermore, uh, the results indicate that weight, whatever your predictor is, is a statistically significant predictor. Now, I'm going to talk about that uh, here in just a second. I have a kind of a hodgepodge of stuff that um, uh, I, I want to present to you, uh, but I want to get this part out uh, first. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, was I know students don't watch the instructional videos, or, or some of you don't. The way that I want you to, you know, from start to end, I know you jump around, just try to find what you need to work your uh, 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 assignments and, and whatever. And uh, so I knew if I if I put that part first, the hodgepodge of stuff first and put the project information at the end that some of you would miss it and it would just call, require a lot more work. And a lot of those emails, well, I don't find the project stuff. So uh, that's why I'm. Uh, being overly pragmatic. Uh, so statistically significant, again, I will explain that in just a second. Predictor of whatever your Y is. Now, here's something that I haven't shown you before. How you actually write up a the results of a test of hypothesis for the slope. The first thing you're going to have is the T. Uh, that should not be underlined. Uh, actually, it isn't. Okay, that's just a typo. What you put right here is the degrees of freedom. Now, the degrees of freedom can be found right here, okay? So you put lowercase t, left parentheses, the degrees of freedom, then equal to the next thing that goes right here is the test statistic. In that case, the test statistic is 16.08. The next thing you do is you report the p-value appropriately. Again, I'm going to teach that in the hodgepodge of information that's going to follow this. Now, the next thing you'll do is you'll run the 95% confidence interval for uh, weight. You don't get that here. You have to go up, go edit, come down to confidence interval, change the uh, uh, intent, compute, and then right here, you get the left bound and the right bound for the 95% confidence interval uh, for the slope. Actually, that uh, that's not right. So make that change. Uh, so the 95% confidence interval for the slope is 0.062 to 0.79. Uh, actually, there's a typo. 0 0.079, 0 0.062, all right, zeros are important. 
uh, and I just blotched that up. So anyway, make uh, make that uh, change. All right, <clears throat> let me uh, grab uh, again. Just just kind of parting information. Uh, super important. I know it's coming at the end, but uh, super important what I'm getting ready to teach you. So uh, let's end on a good note. It's not going to take long. I should get through this easily in three to five minutes. Now. All right, so in general, uh, if we construct a 95% confidence interval for beta 1 and we get the following, uh, what can you conclude? Well, first of all, we conclude that we have statistical significance, and this confidence interval would uh, result in rejecting H sub O beta 1 equals 0. Why? Because if we're hypothesizing that beta 1 is equal to 0, and our interval does not contain zero, then there's reason to reject H sub O. Uh, and, you know, we always uh, want to test this not equal to, so we don't get into any of that dynamic, uh, that dilemma, if you will, about uh, where confidence intervals and hypothesis testing don't agree. All right, now, important stuff here. How do you report p-values, whether or kind of four uh, categories, if you will, on reporting p-values. The first one is if your p-value is greater than or equal to 0.05, then you just report it. So if I end up getting a p-value, that's a little messy right here, but that should be 0.1035647. Since this p-value is greater than 0.05, I just report it. Actually, to three places, uh, this should be p equal 0.104. Now, if my p-value, the second category, if my p-value is less than 0.05 but greater than 0.01, then I report it as p less than 0.05. So if I have a p-value, for example, of 0 0.036, I don't report it at 0 0.036. I report it as p less than 0 0.05. Okay? Again, 0 0.036 is greater than 0 0.01. So I report it at point, uh, p less than 0 0.05. The third entry that I have, the third option is where my P is less than 0 0.001, but not less than 0 0.001. So I don't know if I said that correctly. P value is less than 0 0.01, but greater than 0 0.001. So if I have a P value of 0 0.007, less than 0 0.01, but greater than 0 0.001, I report this as p less than 0 0.01. The final way that we report p values is if p is just less than 0 0.001. So if I get into something where we have a p value of 0 0.00076, this is strictly less than 0 0.001, so I just report it at 0 0.001. So let's just look at an example here. If I have a p-value of 0 0.0082, how do I report that? Well, it's less than 0 0.01, but not less than 0 0.001. So this would fall in the third category. I would report this as p less than 0 0.01. Now, I'm going to expect you to report the p-values appropriately, correctly, on your final project, so keep that in mind. All right, gang. Final thing. This is this is this is good. This is where we've uh, we've been waiting to get to, right? Uh, uh, statistical significance versus not statistical significance. When you look at the literature uh, in reporting statistics, and there's very likely that if you're uh, in a in a major here at uh, Shawnee, well, for that matter, of the fact, any university. Now, let's say you're in psychology. It's very likely that your psychology professors could have you uh, 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 read some uh, some peer-reviewed journals. 
And uh, these journals may have quantitative um, methods in it, you know, statistical results. You will never see the words reject and fail to reject in a, uh, uh, a, a journal, right? So the, the way that you report reject uh, in a statistical, in, in a, uh, a referee journal, is we report that as statistically significant. So if our p value is less than alpha, we have we feel uh, we reject the null, and we have we we report that as uh, statistically significant. If we fail to reject the null, in which case our p value would be greater than or equal to alpha, then we do not have a statistically significant result. That got really messy. I didn't do a really good. Uh, uh, I mean, I could, I just I forgot the why. That's just awful. So um, uh, instead of rewriting everything, I just made fun of myself. This is what it should be: not statistically significant. Notice the spaces that you learned like back in first grade, which me uh, with like six college degrees and a PhD can't do that. Okay, gang, that's all I got. Uh, I hope this uh, helps, obviously, and I hope it uh, it makes a, kind of a seamless transition into uh, uh, creating your final project and get it getting it submitted uh, correctly. All right, I love getting 100s on final projects because they're easier to grade, right? And they boost uh, uh, grades for students. All right, take care.